Is this a perfect sequel? Let's talk Scream 2. and welcome back to Dean Reviews. We're continuing on with our 31 days of Halloween and today we are looking at Scream 2. So Scream 2 is a 1997 American slasher film directed by Wes Craven and was written by Kevin Williamson. Now for me guys Scream 2 is actually one of those very rare examples of a perfect sequel. It does so many good things right that it is kind of bigger, it's bolder and it's bloodier than the last one while at the same time being just as good. The movie picks up with another great opening scene. So with the last movie Scream, we got that great scene with Drew Barrymore that really just kind of threw our expectations out the window. You kind of get the same thing here. So instead we have Jada Pinkett and Omar Epps opening up the movie as two characters just heading to the cinema to watch the movie Stab. Now the movie Stab is pretty much a retelling of what happened in the first Scream movie. So somebody went out of their way to actually make a movie of the events. And first off guys, right out of the gate, that's something great about Scream 2. Once again, it's continuing kind of down that same path of poking fun at slasher movies and just being extremely meta. You essentially have an audience watching a movie within a movie. And what's great as well is they do kind of open up the conversation about watching horror movies and kind of what effects they actually have on the viewer. Now when the movie opens, they are in the cinema watching this movie and both characters get killed off within the kind of the first 10 minutes. Now what's fun is no one in the audience really kind of sees that happening. They're too busy playing ghost face and screaming with their knives to actually see the murder being committed. It's a very daring, it's a very shocking scene and I actually love the way it kind of unfolds. Jada Pinkett as well, she gives a great performance in that movie, especially the end when she kind of crawls up on stage and just screaming in agony. It's actually very harrowing and it's very grounded. The setup of this one as well is sequels and they honestly waste no time going into that. So the movie kind of spends its time dissecting sequels, going through the different rules of what a sequel should be about and it's bigger, bolder and bloodier. So the body count, as Randy says, is always bigger and you definitely get that with the movie. There's a huge cast in the film, which we of course guys have the returning cast from the first movie so we have Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette and Jamie Kennedy. Nev Campbell as Sydney Prescott is of course kind of the big player in the movie and she really does go through kind of an emotional arc in the film. You know she is traumatized about the events that happened in the first movie and she kind of goes through the entire movie not knowing her place. It is a very emotional arc and you really do feel every bit of pain the character goes through. She is a bit of a tragic character at heart you know she is surrounded by death throughout all of these movies but in this one in particular I think she starts to realize that. We also have Courtney Cox and David Arquette so they are back from the original movie kind of following the same storyline they kind of have this love-hate relationship with this one guys what I like about the movie though is with Sydney Prescott you definitely get that emotional connection to her her storyline is a lot darker and it's a lot more serious but when it comes to Dewey and Gale there is some kind of light-hearted comedy in there and it's just a great way to balance that out. A new addition is Cotton Weary. So he was seen in the last movie for literally about four seconds. So he was a character that was set up for the murder of Maureen Prescott. Now with this one, what's great about his character is they do kind of play with the idea, is he good or evil? What are his true intentions? Does he kind of want to get revenge for being put away in prison for a year? It's a great little red herring and you have quite a few of them throughout the movie. Other characters that join the cast are Sarah Michelle Gellar, who honestly is only in two scenes in the entire movie, but she definitely leaves an impact. One is where a group of college kids are discussing sequels. The other scene is a great scene where she kind of has a back and forth with Ghostface. And again, just like the first screen movie, the dialogue literally falls off the screen. It is so good. It's back and forth, very fast paced, but also very clever. Another addition to the movie would have been Laurie Metcalf, who I actually think would have been still on Roseanne at the time. And you can tell it's a huge change of pace for her but she gives a phenomenal performance in the movie particularly in the last act now as i said guys the script is absolutely brilliant but her performance she gives everything she can to that role it is one that kind of keeps you glued to the screen it's in the last act of the movie but it's absolutely phenomenal the body count as well is much bigger in this movie but so is the cast Wes Craven had a lot of characters to juggle in this movie and at times you do slightly forget about every character. But what I like is when people start getting killed off, when the cast really kind of gets cut down, you do kind of know who the bigger players are. Now with the death, there is of course a huge death in this movie. If you haven't seen Scream 2 already, this is going to be a big spoiler, but it has been out for 20 years. So Randy gets killed off kind of in the halfway mark of the movie and it's always been a bit of a decisive one between fans. For me guys, I actually think killing 
killing off Randy in Scream 2 at the time was a very smart move. It kind of gave the movie a little bit more danger to it that anybody could get killed off. But at the same time, I do think killing him off in the long run for the series was a mistake. The movie also has a lot of action to it. So it's a huge kind of, I suppose, car chase scene. It's really exciting. It's really exhilarating. But it actually ends with a really quiet tension filled scene where two characters kind of have to crawl over Ghostface while he's unconscious and I do like how they actually meld both of those things together so you are kind of on the edge of your seat whether it's action or it's a very quiet moment. Now the last act of the movie guys is one of my favourite last acts of any horror movie ever. We have Sydney taking on two different ghost faces and what I love about it again is the writing. You, of course you get the kind of action part of it where they're trying to take her out and she's fighting back. All of that is done brilliantly but again just a back and forth between the characters. The dialogue in those scenes are absolutely brilliant. Again guys you really feel for Sydney throughout the entire movie but mainly in that last scene where you kind of see everything that she's lost. She is a very tragic character that has had a lot of trauma in her life and it does all kind of culminate in that last scene. All of this is again to do with her and you kind of see her experience that on screen. The performance she gives as well as the two cast members who play Ghostface is really exciting and it just keeps you glued to the screen. But guys that's what I would say with Scream 2. It's a very smart movie, it's a very clever movie for sure but it also has some really great killers in there, a brilliant cast and some really good action. Honestly guys, this is one of the best sequels I've ever seen for a horror movie and just it's sequels in general. Sequels tend to be hit and miss but this one does everything right. It's clever, it's witty, it's scary and it's just as good as the original. But guys, if you're a fan of Scream 2, as always guys, let me know down in the comments below. If you can guys, make sure you pop on the notification bell. Remember guys, we are doing 31 videos for the month of October. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.